Darren, it's not been the best start to what the party was hoping would be a very positive week. Uh, what's been the response, though, to Angela Rayner's comments? Yeah, in many ways, it's not, Nana. This is a party that yesterday spent all day talking about the machinations of internal party uh, rules for the election of the leader and the deputy leader. And today, it is talking uh, about Angela Rayner's uh, comments, uh, which, as you've just seen, she branded uh, the Conservatives and Boris Johnson as scum. Now, she is unrepentant today, in many ways, doubling down, saying that she is not going to apologise for those comments. Uh, that is, in spite of calls uh, from some Conservative MPs. Uh, she says she will only apologise when Boris Johnson retracts those remarks that she views as homophobic, racist and misogynistic, which I think is pretty unlikely uh, to happen. Now, Keir Starmer was asked about this on the TV uh, this morning. Uh, he's not calling uh, for Angela Rayner to uh, apologise, uh, essentially saying, you know, Angela said what she said. It's not the words that he would use. Uh, rather interestingly, uh, he wouldn't go as far as that. Uh, but understands the anger, I think, there is within the party uh, about the Conservatives within uh, government. But in the end, really, is this really what the Labour Party want to be talking about, to be dominating the news agenda? I'm not entirely sure it is. This is the first conference, of course, in person, the first conference with Keir and Angela Rayner at the top of the party. Uh, and what they should be talking about are some of the policy issues uh, that might attract votes, that might get them into government at the next election. And yet, as I say, here we are uh, talking about words... Uh, that many feel are inappropriate by the deputy leader uh, towards uh, the government. Though uh, Angela Rayner, of course, would say it is a reflection of the anger that there is within certain sections of the country about the direction the government is taking the country. Mm, it's interesting, isn't it? Because you'd want your leaders to maybe express themselves in maybe slightly more, well, I don't know, slightly different language than that. But there's also been some announcements on schools as well, hasn't there? Yeah, big announcement today in terms of removing the charitable status of around 1,300 independent schools in this country. Uh, now, Nana, they, uh, at the moment, uh, essentially have a tax break uh, because they're viewed as charities. Labour saying they're going to remove that. It's uh, going to bring in around £1.6 billion to the Treasury every year, and they'd repump that money into the state education system to try and improve state schools. Now, clearly this is pretty controversial. Frankly, it might mean that some of those private schools would go out of business, uh, though for some of the Labour Party it doesn't go far enough. But it is Labour's attempt to try and create this dividing line with the Conservative Party with an eye-catching policy on education at a time, of course, when education and schools need a pretty big injection of uh, funding. Uh, and this at the same time as well is there seems to be a little bit of a split in the party when it comes to energy, because we heard earlier on this week from the Shadow Energy Secretary, Ed Miliband, you remember him, the former Labour leader, saying that he thinks that some of the big energy companies should be nationalised under a Labour government in the wake, of course, of the gas crisis that we're seeing uh, engulf the country, it should be uh, said. Keir Starmer, though, on the TV this morning, again asked about this, he said that nationalisation wasn't uh, the way forward. Uh, not ideal that you've got mixed messages coming from the top of the party, particularly on the day that Ed Miliband is making his keynote speech here at Labour Party conference.